बादे बादे नुमान जाए बादे बादे नुमान जाए ओ बादे बादे नुमान जाए ओ सुना दे बोल समाये बादे बादे नुमान जाए वायु बादे बादे नुमान जाए बादे बादे नुमान जाए बादे बादे नुमान जाए ओ सुना दे बोल समाये बादे बादे Good Sunday morning to all of you lovely witches out there. My name is Majabella and I am your Sunday host for the Biophilic Alternative. Last week I did a hoodoo spell and I had some um, uh, positive feedback on it and also I had a couple of questions. So I wanted to address more fully than I could do it in just typing it out um, to the people who asked me these questions. Um, and it's about removing obstacles. We've all had moments in our magic when we feel stuck, we have tried and tried, but to no success. Or maybe in our lives, at every turn, it seems like we are blocked at everything we attempted to do. Why is this? Well, it has been my personal experience and observation that this can come about for a whole lot of reasons. But I am going to give you the most common basics on this. In magic, there are principles that we follow to make great magic. Um, and we can, once we're experienced enough, break a lot of these rules to make even greater magic, more powerful magic. But, um, however, there, there is um, some things that even the best of us get in trouble with. The results of our magic will still start to show no results, inconsistent results, or even worse, the opposite result that we intended it to do. The number one reason, and unfortunately there is many reasons as there are personalities out there, but the number one reason I have found lies within ourselves. We build our own stubborn obstacles to our magic by not clearing out repressed feelings about the situation we are performing the magic for. We say we believe, and we do believe in magic, but underlying this belief is a nagging belief about the issue. Weight loss, money, love, etc. have all uh, a lifetime of confused belief systems built up in our egos and personalities that are hard to shake for the most part and must be addressed to give us uh, power in our magic. Number two reason we have these issues with unsuccessful magic is after we release the magic to the universal power tides then we start looking for the results. If we don't see immediate results or as quick as we think that they should come, we start to fret. And it is this fretting that can delay the results. Someone has, number three, someone has created obstacles for you, either by deliberate intent or more likely by a passive intent that they are unaware of themselves. Keep silent your desires, keep silent your plans while working your magic because someone close to you may be reacting to your spoken words and then negatively affecting your workings. They may have feelings of jealousy, envy, revenge, or just apprehension to the change that you're trying to make or just an overall negative attitude towards you trying to improve your life in any way regardless and they think that it's pointless. Number four, the energy of the universe is not in sync with the magic that you're trying to perform. We can always wait for the best time, but we can't always do this. Sometimes our magic is more um, time sensitive and we must perform it even when it goes against the moon cycles or the planetary energies that are going on out there. 
but we have to make the most of the time that we have. So number one thing that you can do for this is check into the planetary hours and the planetary days so that you can perform the spell um, very specifically on a specific day, but use the planetary hour instead of anything else that you've got going on. Number two, you can um, reword the spell to fit the proper moon phase. So if you're doing a money spell, say you need money, and you are in a waning cycle like we are right now, well you would write the spell to remove debt. It's the same thing as bringing money to you because you're relieving your debt. So in the moon phase of waning, you just rewrite your spell to fit how you want it to play about in your life. Number three, you throw as many layers of energy into your spell to help you overcome the energies that abound. So you use uh, a more intense spell to overcome sometimes some of the energy that's working out there, like Mercury retrograde, for example. So you you be more careful at how you write your spell, but you layer your spell with stones, with herbs, with planetary hours, planetary days, anything that you um, are comfortable with, you put more and more intent and power into. Um, this sometimes helps you overthrow some of the overriding energy tides that are going on in, out there in the, in the world. When the energy tides are not conducive for the kind of magic that I want to work, generally I will actually call on my specific ally that I deal with all the time to bring forth better um, magic for me. So I will actually call on my specific deity and pull that deity in and ask her to take over for me. And that overrides most energy tides that are working as well. Now in Hoodoo, as in a lot of other magical traditions, there are some types of magical spell works that you can do um, that can help alleviate um, some of these issues as well too. So if you're not sure what the obstacle to your magic is, and it is um, something that you need accomplished and you can't seem to get it done, then you need to do the spells that are um, more along the lines of removing obstacles, um, hex breaking, jinx breaking, um, road opening um, type magic. All of these um, type magics are something that you can do as a preliminary spell work before you work your major spell. This way, if you've put the jinx on yourself or you've, uh, you've actually crossed yourself in your bad thinking, which is usually the number one thing that we've done, and we've done this to ourselves generally speaking. Um, number two, if you're doing this uncrossing and hexing, it could be that somebody else did it. But you don't have to know specifically the source of your obstacle. It actually can just be that these candles can, um, or these baths that you can do, you can do it with, in the form of a bath, you can do it in the form of a candle ritual work, you can also do it in an actual spell itself to unhex, uncross, unbreak the situation so that you can actually move to the actual spell. You can run these spells simultaneously with your with your spell that you're trying to work or you can do them in succession. Do the hex breaking or um, the obstacle removal spell and then start on your regular spell work that you're trying to obtain. Um, this is the way I usually handle it in, in situations for myself. I will um, do a, a, a bath, then I will do some candle working. Sometimes I do it together and sometimes I do it in succession. just depends on 
um, which kind of candle I'm using and how long it's going to take to perform the spells. But generally they are side by side and um, done in succession but very close together and when I say close together I mean that I usually will have a cauldron burning with both candles working at the same exact time meaning that the spells are working as the it's removing the other one is building so I have one waning down and one waning up and it's kind of like a u-shape to give more power to the spell that I'm working um, so how would you do an uncrossing or um, jinx breaking or road opening type, um, say, first of all, bath salt? Um, I personally start with a, a purification of myself because I usually feel that I am the biggest obstacle to my magic. So I will always start there. And in that ritual bath, I am removing my own blocks, my own mental blocks, but I'm also removing any attachments that somebody has placed on me that I may be totally unaware of. Sometimes I am even aware of it, but most of the time you don't even know where it all comes from. So herbs that you can use frequently in these bath salts or to dress candles because how I usually do it is I will pick the herbs that I'm going to do and I will put them in a base of a purification bath salt that I use all the time. That purification bath salt for me is um, sea salt, magnesium salt, nag champa, white sage, cinnamon, and jasmine. And I keep that bath salt made up all the time. But when I'm going to do an uncrossing or an unhexing to do with it to empower my spell work, then I'm going to add any one of the following ingredients. I have my favorites, but I'm going to give you a list of, of herbs that you can use. Just There's lots more. This is just a short list, but this will give you an idea of how you can make your own um, uncrossing or hex breaking jinx removing, road opening type um, uh, incense and ingredients. Um, these, these are the most uh, common kinds. It's uh, salt, rue leaves, hyssop leaves, a broken chain, cayenne pepper, black pepper, sulfur, sugar, devil's claw, um, excuse me, devil's shoestring, uh, crab shell powder, and angelica root. Also, dragon's blood, five finger grass, ginger, pine, and the list goes on. You can um, get very, very specific as well um, into the actual kind of, of removal. Um, there's also lemon verbena, which I use frequently as well. Um, now, I like to start with the, the ritual bath and when I have, like I said, I have my base purification bath salts and then I will take the herbs or I will take the essential oils and I will grind them up very well with my intent, the chosen herbs that I have chosen to use. You do not have to use all of these, just a couple will do, just a few. And you mix that and then I'll take it and I will put it in a base of an oil. So I will use jojoba, grapeseed, um, almond oil, olive oil. It, the oil base to me really doesn't matter. It's the oil that I have on hand. I frequently have safflower oil. I frequently have olive oil, of course, because I cook with olive oil all the time. But you could also use coconut oil. Whatever oil you have, even regular vegetable oil, and then you infuse the herbs into that oil. And I like to heat it up because I like to heat the oil to um, help speed up the process of removing the essential essences from the herbs that I've placed in there. And in that, the I take that infusion and then I'm going to use some of the oil into the bath salts and that will be my 
uncrossing bath salt powder basically and I'm going to use it in my bath but I still take that same oil that I've used now and I will dress my candles with it as well and then therefore I have my own uncrossing oil and um, I can also use some of the dried powdered ingredient herbs and I can also put that as well to make it um, even more powerful on the candle itself in the dressing of the candle. So there's lots of ways there that you can use that particular kind of situation. Um, now, my go-to mix is ginger, lemon verbena, and hyssop. That's what I tend to use most of. It's um, fairly inexpensive and I usually have plenty of it on hand and so that's usually what I go to. Now there is um, other ones that you can go ahead and you can buy and maybe you already have these already um, in your uh, in your arsenal as well and let's see I have I have some here so if you do not have all of your loose herbs and stuff when you go to um, some botanicas or order them online you can buy a lot of these already made up um, this one right here is uncrossing it was $2.99. I have Road Opener. Again, this was, I believe, $2.99. And I have these oils. This one is Jinx Removing. And then this one is the Van Van Oil. Now, Van Van Oil is pretty much vervain or the other name for vervain is lemon verbena. So I can, I use my own lemon verbena, but if I'm out, I always have these oils on hand. I don't think that they're as powerful, but anything charged with your own intent becomes just as powerful as anything. So um, I keep them on hand so that if I'm out or if I need to be doing something in a very quick hurry, these are easier to grab and use and I don't have to worry about it. I just already have it and I can just quickly use what I have and I don't have to worry about um, actually spending the time to um, compound my own. The reason that I do that is because sometimes when I feel like I need all these obstacles removed is the very time that I'm not feeling very magical and I'm trying to get back there to begin with. So that is a great time to use these ones that are already pre-made, already done up, throw your intent in it, start your ritual bath, and then that starts centering you to where you're able to get yourself back on track. And that is the whole purpose of the spell work to begin with, is to get you back on track. And, um, and one of the um, spells that you can also do along with this um, obstacle removing is that you can take a piece of paper so you can take a piece of paper and you can draw a brick wall or a stone wall and you can just basically freehand it. You don't have to have anything fancy, but you can go on the internet and you can print out an appropriate um, symbol that represents a, um, a blockage to you. So the blockage can be anything. If brick walls remind you of a blockage, a stone wall reminds you of a blockage, any image that seems like it has been thrown up as a barrier to what you're wanting to get out of life or to get out of your magic or whatever it is, you can 
um, print that symbol on a piece of paper like I'm doing right now I'm drawing a rough estimate of a brick wall I mean a stone wall and so it's just like this this to me is a stone wall take this I'm gonna just I don't have my scissors with me okay so I've got the image of a brick wall, stone wall, or whatever image it's going to be. Now, you dress it with your personal oil. Um, you can also dress it with your own blood, saliva. You can, you know, you can use the bodily fluids. I don't find that necessary, but you can. I have an oil that I use as my personal oil. Um, it has some ingredients for me that make, is special to me that I've infused into an oil with a few drops of my um, own blood, but also a few drops of my favorite perfume as well, along with some essential oils and herbs as well. So your holy oil becomes your own personal recipe and that is something that you'll develop over your own time. I anoint the paper. Now in this process I am going to to fold it away from me because I want this to be removed. I want it to be gone out of my life and I'm going to do this like this because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to annihilate this piece of paper. Now traditionally you can tear or even chew it. I'm not going to chew it, but you can. The chewing factor would be more of your own um, saliva and it would be a symbolic fact of you taking down it yourself with your with your own teeth but I don't find that necessary in my vision I can use my own hands my own power my own process there and literally you just start tearing and making this as small as possible and if you have a charcoal sensor like this, you can burn it upon the charcoal disc. And so, and as you are doing this, you are removing brick by brick, stone by stone, or say if, there's other ways you can visualize it, but you can just keep tearing it down, keep tearing it up, Keep throwing it on the sensor until you can burn away all of your obstacles. It is a very big visual for your mind to remove any obstacles and blocks to what your desired um, aim is in mind. Another thing that you can do is you can take in kitchen magic, you can light your stove and you can get a pan with boiling water in it. You can set another pan or bowl inside that and you can place ice. Ice, if you feel like you're frozen, like you are frozen in time, but you can't move forward. The very act of melting that ice, which again, you can anoint with the Van Van oil, the uncrossing powder, the road opener, however you wish to do it, and you just let and watch and, and concentrate on the melting away of that obstacle or that deep freeze that you feel like you've been in. Or maybe somebody has put you in um, a freezer of ice. That's a big uh, way to block somebody or to un... Um, you frequently bind somebody by putting them in the freezer in ice. So you can do that as a reversal to yourself. If you have the image of the ice and then you you let it 
uh, melt onto the stove so that you're using the power of fire, you're using the power of water to release yourself and to release the obstacle so that you can move forward again. Um, there's lots of ways to use your creative mind on however you're feeling stuck or imprisoned into the situation and you find a good metaphor that is the way that you're truly feeling and then you use that to unbind and unstick yourself. And I just wanted to throw that out there for people. Uh, Mercury Retrograde has a lot of us feeling like we keep going back in time and revisiting old problems and issues. And so use this energy also to release all of that. Revisit, say, okay, I see that, and reverse it because in a couple of days we will be going forward and it will be a time of releasing us from these old issues. So y'all have a very blessed Sunday. I hope this helps in um, your magic and y'all have a blessed, blessed weekend.